Now let's shift our attention to common security threats. But before we do though, I wanna bring something to your attention. There was a really nice piece on CBS News on 60 Minutes that you can search on YouTube. It's available for free on ransomware. And they talked about how cyber criminals hold data hostage and why the best solution is often paying a ransom. I mean, that's insane. They're actually suggesting that you should go ahead and pay the bad guys. And check this out, guys, if I continue reading this. Targets have included hospitals and municipalities, but the FBI says anyone on the internet should expect to be attacked by cyber criminals. That's one of the government agencies admitting that we are all vulnerable. Another piece of article I wanna share with you guys by New York Times. Colonial Pipeline is a company on the East Coast. They are the operator of fuel lines. They were actually hit by a ransomware attack and they ended up paying $5 million to be able to get their data back. And we'll talk about how those attacks happen and some of the mechanics behind them momentarily. But check this out. The payment clears the way for gas to begin flowing again, but it risks emboldening other criminal groups to take American companies hostage by seizing control of their computers. So in other words, this type of attack allows the bad guys globally to get inspired and pay more attention to developing more advanced type of ransomwares because it, this was a successful attack. They were actually paid to allow Colonial Pipeline to get their data back. So that is very serious. And as a matter of fact, they had FBI involved. And I believe FBI informed Colonial Pipeline that the only way to get their data back is to actually pay the bad guys. There was no other way around it. So that is very serious, guys. So now that I have your attention, let's look at a couple of different type of attacks. So the first attack we're gonna look at is called address spoofing attack. So in this attack, what we have is a hacker. And let's imagine we have a corporate server and we'll call that a target. And the hacker would construct an IP packet with a source IP of 200.21.199.250. Now, the IP in red in our IP packet, take a look at your screen. It's not available anywhere. It's some fictitious made up IP by the hacker. And there's a reason why it was crafted this way. You'll see it in a moment. And the destination IP is set to 199.1.9.24, which is our target machine. So that packet is sent to the target machine. And what does the target machine do? It sends an IP packet reply. So the source IP then becomes the corporate server IP, but the destination IP is the source that the hacker had initially set, right? So basically this packet is going nowhere. It's going in no man's land. And why is this type of attack bad? Well, it's using up resources on this corporate server. Now, this is one example and one packet. Imagine millions of packets or tens of millions of packets being sent to a corporate server. Now, that would be really, really bad. And once again, the idea is to just exhaust the system of its resources, CPU resources, memory resources. So that's the address spoofing attack. The other type of attack is called denial of service or DOS attack. Here, we have a bad guy, we have a target corporate server. In this case, what the bad guy does is crafts a TCP send message. So in a TCP three-way handshake, as you guys know, the first packet is TCP sent. Once again, it sets the source IP to a fictitious IP that doesn't exist. Now the target server gets that message and it sends what's called a TCP synac. That's the second stage in our three-way handshake. And once again, that IP is going nowhere. That packet is going nowhere because it's a fictitious IP. That IP doesn't exist. But what it's doing on our server is that it's using up server TCP state table. So once again, CPU and memory resources on this server are being abused to the point that our state table gets full 
and we can no longer provide service to legitimate customers that might need access to this corporate server. And this is also called a TCP SYN flood attack because we're, we're flooding the corporate server with the TCP SYN messages. This is an ugly one. The next level up from the DOS attack is called distributor denial of service or DDoS attack. That's another very nasty one. Here we have a hacker who installs a CNC server or a command and control server. This is also called a botnet. And then we have a target machine, which once again is a corporate server. And what this bad guy does is scans the internet looking for machines that don't have security. So literally like they scan millions and millions of machines on the internet and people who don't have a firewall at home and have zero security at the edge of their network, bad guy goes ahead and controls those machines by infecting them and they turn into bots. And sometimes these bad guys can send some sort of like an email or some sort of embed a bot into a website. It can infect machines in different ways. But the ultimate result is that these machines turn into bots. And at that point, what the bad guy does is that instead of sending a single message to the target server, it now has all these bots that are part of a botnet and with a single command, all of these bots can send message and bombard the target server. I'm only showing five machines, but imagine 500 machines or 5,000 machines sending messages to a target machine. And you can also think of these bots as a zombie. That's another term that you will hear when you read articles and things like that. So keep that in in the back of your mind, it's like a zombie, an army of zombies, right? Attacking humans or victims. And it's also, these are also called victims because these are innocent victims. They have no idea that their machines are being used for nefarious purposes. And the bad news is that if these attacks are really bad, sometimes FBI or CIA could actually be knocking on the door of these people that are running bots on their machines without even knowing, without even realizing that they're causing this DDoS attack. So that's a really, really nasty one. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.